One minute we're watching a movie and the next minute it's a commercial. What? Welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shameless product placements in movies. Well that's where I see things just a little differently. Contractor no, I will not bow to any sponsor. For this list, we're taking a look at products that snuck their way into films in less than subtle ways. Maybe I'm wrong on this one, but for me, The Beast doesn't include selling out. We understand that companies just want to make a buck, but can we at least feel like we're being led gently to their goods and services? Some of these are just insulting in their obviousness. Hey, wh wh where's my Egg McMuffin? Breakfast is over at 10.30. Really? Yeah. I thought it was 11. I thought that too. Number 10, Head and Shoulders, Evolution. Let's give it a shot. Come on. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. We'll get the troops together. We're getting shampoo. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, we learned that this specific brand of dandruff shampoo is both good for a flaky scalp and the extermination of aliens. Head and shoulders. The dandruff shampoo? Yeah, that's the stuff. The active ingredient is selenium sulfide. When extraterrestrials land on Earth and begin evolving into crazy creatures, a solution is needed to end their reign of terror and napalm ain't gonna cut it. Us simple folk probably wouldn't have thought that pumping brand name shampoo up an alien monster's rectum would be the key to Earth's salvation. Haven't you noticed how shiny and flake free our hair is? But that's why they pay the fellas over at Head & Shoulders the big bucks. Number nine, Taco Bell, Demolition Man. So what's with this cocktail guy anyway? He says I saved his life, which I'm not even sure I did, and my reward is dinner and dancing at Taco Bell. I mean, hey, I like Mexican food, but come on. What really stands out to us as strange about Taco Bell's obvious name dropping throughout this film is the idea that should a franchise war actually break out at some point in the future, this is the restaurant chain that would reign supreme. Nacho Supreme, if you will. Your tone is quasi facetious, but you do not realize that Taco Bell was the only restaurant to survive the franchise wars. According to the film, all restaurants are Taco Bells. Except these aren't your standard Taco Bells. Welcome to Taco Bell. Enjoy your meal, sir. This is swanky dining with waiters, piano playing, and dancing. Because nothing says dystopia better than a monopolized, poorly executed American interpretation of Mexican food. Enjoy your meal, sir. Good thing I'm hungry. Number eight, McDonald's Big Daddy. Hey, Yappy, if you end the conversation, I'll get you an Egg McMuffin. How about a sausage McMuffin with hash browns? You got a deal. Apparently, screaming at the top of your lungs inside a McDonald's wasn't much cause for concern in the late 90s. We stopped serving breakfast at 10.30. Ah, oh, horse shit! But let's be honest, who among us hasn't been beefed when they arrive too late for Mickey D's breakfast, am I right? Nice parenting. Hey, thanks, you my therapist, take a walk. As the stand-in dad to an abandoned kid, Adam Sandler manages to loudly mention the phrase Happy Meal about five times in five seconds. You want a Happy Meal? We'll get you one of those Happy Meals. You got a Happy Meal? Can we get a Happy Meal? Yeah. Will somebody get the kid a Happy Meal? Maybe he should have taken a page from his other movies and shouted about Subway or Popeye's Chicken while he was at it. What you do is put it in your mouth and let the meat slide down your throat hole. Number seven, Pepsi and Nike, the Back to the Future franchise. It's easy to find evidence of these two mega brands throughout this film series. Take a gander at them moccasins. What kind of skins is them? What's that writing mean? Nike, what is that? Some sort of Asian talk or something? <laughs> and Pepsi and Nike aren't alone, with the likes of Mattel and, of course, the DeLorean Motor Company also earning top billing in the product department. Ah, uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Stay with what me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Whether Marty's attempting to order a soda or watching his super cool sneaks lace themselves. Power laces, all right. These brands earn themselves a place in pop culture history, shameless as it may be. All I want is a Pepsi. Number six, Converse and Audi, iRobot. Thing of beauty. There's almost no reason for us to care what shoes Will Smith is wearing in this movie. Boy, what is that on your feet? Mm. Converse All Stars, vintage 2004. <laughs> Don't turn your face up like that. I know you want some. All you gotta do is ask. Clearly, Converse is the footwear of choice for the put upon cop with a robotic chip on his shoulder, especially if he's into the vintage retro style of the 90s. 
Oh, did we not mention it's 2035? Please take the next exit to your right. If that wasn't enough, we're treated to another scene that features them pulling up in a swanky new Audi, bold as day. Concept cars and Converse on a police officer's salary? Spoon. Thank you, Mr. Spooner. Nice shoes. Number five, AOL, you've got mail. That's so sad. Do you know what this is? No. What we're seeing here, it's what? the end of Western civilization as we know it. For those of you too young to remember, there was a time in the early days of the internet when AOL was the popular kid on campus. Of course, this was before Google eclipsed the sun. You got mail. AOL was such a hotshot company, their login greeting became the title of a rom-com starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan and their product became a central plot device of the film. I wanted it to be you. I wanted it to be you so badly. But that's not all. No soft-shelled romantic comedy would be complete without a coffee shop scene. In a Starbucks, no less. The whole purpose of places like Starbucks is for people with no decision-making ability whatsoever to make six decisions just to buy one cup of coffee. Number four, Mountain Dew and General Motors, Transformers. We'd seen hints that Michael Bay may not be subtle with his product placements, but Transformers takes it to new levels of shameless. Mountain Dew and GM weren't the only two brands to make an appearance in this Bay smashathon, but theirs were certainly the least graceful. GM is all up in this movie, so much so it seems like one giant sales pitch. But the true genius comes when the AllSpark manages to transform a Mountain Dew vending machine into a rootin' tootin' robot in disguise called Dispenser. Well, go ahead. Play. Number three, Nintendo The Wizard. In case you didn't know, Nintendo was big in the 80s. Like, super big. As in, hey, let's basically make a movie about Nintendo games and game-related accessories Power Glove. that just plays like a 96-minute long commercial big. <laughs> Nothing says low-key and nuanced product placement like three mega screens with three preteens competing in a game of Super Mario Bros. 3. You know, find the war, dude, find the war! There's a plot in there somewhere. Actually, it's kind of a rip-off of the Who's Tommy, and it's supposed to be moving and poignant. Maybe. But all we remember is Nintendo. Number two, IHOP, Man of Steel. You know what happens to your childhood bully turned friend after you save them from drowning? They grow up to manage an IHOP. And it just so happens that in all your superpower glory, you swoop through and manage to cause considerable damage to said IHOP. There's really no reason for the audience to even see an IHOP in this movie, let alone more than once. But alas, we keep getting reminded about IHOP. We get it already, and now we want pancakes. That's what I'm worried about. Before we shamelessly plug our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Crown Prince Otto would become a true visionary. That's weird. Where's Shinobi? I thought I was playing Shinobi. My point is, if we can't beat their defenses, then we gotta get around them. Major, one more time. Anytime. There's a box of Twinkies in that grocery store. Not just any box of Twinkies. The last box of Twinkies that anyone will enjoy in the whole universe. I'm sorry, excuse me, do you... Really? It's scary because it's new. McDonald's, Mac and Me. A 
Let's be real here. The Mac in this movie's title isn't referring to the mysterious alien creature. It's all about McDonald's. Also, Sears, Skittles, and Coke. Hi, Coach. How's it going? It's going. Nice teddy bear. Yeah. In the late 80s, this mega fast food franchise succeeded in having a craptastic E.T. ripoff created around a commercial for its restaurants. Why else would there need to be an impromptu dance sequence in the parking lot of a McDonald's? Are kids even having birthday parties at McDonald's anymore? Who did this fool, anyway? Ronald McDonald is literally a character. But we're still loving it. What's he doing? I don't know. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most shameless product placement in movies? It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Wow, fighting the alien menace can be tough work. And so is keeping your hair clean, shiny, and dandruff-free. So it's a good thing that we always keep a healthy supply of head and shoulders around the house.